So when India became independent in 1947, the priorities were to build the nation and to create, generate wealth, to build infrastructure. In all of this huddle to create a magnificent nation, a few people fell through the cracks. And these people landed up on the streets and whom we call homeless. And nothing was done. There were millions of them. Nothing was done to address this issue because the nation was too busy trying to grapple with this, uh, you know, uh, foundational problems. But around mid 90s, a few good Samaritans decided to do something about the cause. And one of them is Dr. Indu Prakash Singh. And he's the person who actually also came up with the idea of setting up shelters for these homeless so that they have a roof that they can go to in the night. And he also re-Christianed them. He tried to also visibilize these invisibles on the street by giving them respectability and calling them city makers instead of homeless. City makers because they contribute to the country, they contribute to the economy, they contribute to our lives and we do not even recognize them. And so we are really happy and proud to have Dr. Indu with us today and we're going to talk to him more about the issue of the homeless. So thank you Indu for taking time out this World Homeless Day and we're really happy to have you here. You've been one of the pioneers in this space of helping the homeless people, uh, humanizing them and you've been also one of the pioneers in making shelters for, for the homeless people across India. Can you tell us a little bit more about the seminal contribution and how it all started? Yeah, uh, thank you Kirith for inviting me for this important um, interview. Um, just to tell you that, you know, first of all, I got in, involved in the social action field uh, due to, uh, you know, um, I think the dowry death of one of my friends, um, you know, way back in my college days. Uh, fast forward, you know, um, I did my various masters and all in philosophy and sociology and then from Jane and all and been part of the women's movement. It was uh, and then I moved into one organizations big time. And um, it was around uh, 99 uh, when uh, Harsh Mandar, who was the then executive director of Action Aid, uh, invited me to meet him. And uh, when I met him, um, you know, he had a couple of ideas uh, in terms of, you know, um, work that I could do. And uh, he dropped the idea of um, working with the homeless. And uh, I had done a study in Vihai, you know, on Delhi Tale of Two Cities in 1993. And uh, so the idea of working with the homeless was something which was very exciting, having known the problem on the streets of Delhi. Uh, so, uh, you know, though at that point, uh, you know, when we started, took on the work, uh, Kirith, uh, we had no clue who the homeless were, no studies on homelessness, no papers were writing on homelessness as such, you know. So it was uh, a tough thing for us, but we took the plunge. Fabulous. So tell us a little bit more about uh, what difficulties you had, because today there is a data available. There is a certain yeah. process in which you deal with the homeless. Uh, there yeah. is a certain uh, sort of a manual that is available to kind of treat or to address homeless issues. And you, along with the other stakeholders, have actually been the major contributors to that entire process to create the entire process and the structure of how to deal with this issue and how to address this issue so can you tell us a little bit more about how you went about it oh yeah yeah um see uh, kirith you know um uh, we put a f uh, first a team together because i was uh, that time made the director of the organization called ashradi karabyan which was a direct initiative action aid india which is an international organization so um you know, uh, we went about doing recce of Delhi, various spots where the homeless people are located, uh, trying to uh, then uh, do our, um, you know, uh, rapid uh, survey. Uh, we did our uh, head count and all of homeless people. And we came to a figure of 52,765 people sleeping on the streets of Delhi as such. And uh, we maintained for everyone counted one missed. And uh, so uh, this was the first survey we did in 2000. That brought us uh, face to face with the problems of the homeless, uh, and um, you know, uh, of course, we did another survey way back in two thousand eight with IGSSS. So that we have been doing, uh, you know. Uh, so when we were on the streets, um, Kirith, uh, 
at that point you know uh, the biggest problem that uh, we were faced with when we were it also came out in our own study that was a study was called the capitals homeless um, published in 2001 study done in 2000 as such released by robert chambers you know so the biggest problem that the homeless faced um, that point in delhi was the police brutality shelters were not there in very less numbers and all that but the biggest bottleneck for the entire work was the police bashing up homeless people back in blue you know and of course there were a whole lot of other issues also i'll come to that we had no support from the bureaucrats the city government was least bothered that time you know um, uh, there was nothing happening at the courts also so we were up uh, against i would say you know more than a mount everest you know like we didn't know how to climb that everest which were there and every point there was a bottleneck so we had to so clear I, the paths as you went by i i remember you telling me about an incident about a small boy who yes, yes. was beaten yes. up black and blue by the police yeah. what really happened yeah. there uh see you know in fact um, during one of my uh, night visits that we used to have night vigils you know that which used to do in 2000 start from 2000 which was from every uh, from about 10 o'clock in the night till early morning uh, i read every um, you know tuesdays and fridays this been the streets of delhi so one night i was um, moving around and i met this boy uh, close to jama masjid and i won't name him because he was all 8 years old at that point and uh, you know uh, quite like we are used to asking you know we were asked as kids ki beta bade ko banna kya chahte ho what do you want to grow up to be and the answer he gave me shook me uh, kiri i can tell you he didn't want to be bhagat singh or gandhi or you know anybody freedom fighter or whatever he wanted to be hitler for two minutes i was talked that this child of 8 years wants to be hitler after two minutes when i composure return and all i just patted him a bit and said beta kya baat hai tell me why do you want to be hitler you know that all of 8 years the small frame of the child turns total red in rage and kirit he says bhaiya jis tarike se mujhe belt aur booton se police ne mara hai na main ek hafte tak chal nahi paya tha main main hitler ban ke na in sab ko marunga so imagine this child is growing with the nightmare not a dream to be hitler so is this a democracy that you know we were uh, the how we catering to a children and to people so we saw this ugly side of delhi and we ourselves saw it i i was there at that point to hear that thing i this is not somebody who told me i heard it myself so there were in fact in the 20 years more than 20 years of journey of working with the homeless i got hundreds of stories you know of neglect of torture of trauma of abuse that hundreds of men women children they all have faced but there is an interesting term that you used for the homeless to provide them more dignity to give them more respect to visibilize them and that term is city makers and i believe that term is now been coined by uh, you and it's really Uh, been accepted by a lot of people what does it actually mean what do you mean by city makers yeah yeah uh, thank you kirith for asking that important question in fact you know uh, it took us 10 years to even to come to this term city makers huh? we were calling them homeless homeless people census calls them houseless uh, you know and uh, so we were such somehow uncomfortable with this word and when you go to people and say aap beghar ho aap homeless ho and the, even the words that we use to signify people is always deficient there's a deficit of concern and for them you know so we were not happy with the term homeless calling our work as working with homeless or it's a homeless project in igss or whatever and so that's that's when we started thinking that what is the term that we should be really using uh, keeping the dignity of the people uh, in mind and this word this struck me um, uh, kirit that you know uh, we said i was trying with the idea about city 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 maker and that's that's what that's what the word came city makers and the simple thing is that these people the homeless they are not beggars they have made the city with a certain labor they are hard working people you all have seen the stories of migration during the covid times and all they all have been working in different cities of this country the country runs because of the certain labor they have made india and when it comes to 
the giving them the due you call them thieves beggars choru chakka kangla and all that so you uh, you stigmatize them you abuse them you invisibilize them so we came up with this term city makers which was as per the constitution of india a dignified term you know under articles 14 15 19 21 giving right to life and that's why we say that they might be homeless but they are city makers and they have every right to the city as such every right every amenity belongs to them not as something deficient but as some somebody and something who has contributed to the cities as we all have also contributed so i'd like to remind my viewers that uh these city makers are the ones who are actually subsidizing our cost of living subsidizing our lifestyle within the city because we hardly pay them anything they clean our gutters they clean our surroundings they keep the city intact they do all the menial jobs they all do and and they don't have any any dignity whatsoever and they don't have any respect at all they are completely uh, disowned by the rest of the society and i think we need to look at it from that lens that you know today we are able to afford a certain lifestyle is because of the cheap labor and and the fact that we're not willing to pay pay a price for it pay a price for it and uh, you know uh, that's that's really shocking and it's really disheartening to know how we are how the apathy of the people is actually impacting everything uh coming to uh your involvement and engagement at the international level i believe you've also spoken at the united nations about the issue and then you're also associated mm-hmm. with certain international organizations and you're moving very very powerfully in that domain and you uh, you have immense contribution even from an international perspective to bring about the awareness of the homelessness in india and internationally as well can you tell us a little bit more about what your united nations talk was all about and what are the associations that you have internationally yeah you know um uh, kirit i must tell you that for this work that we have uh, embarked on we got support from all people you know everyone you know came in to support this work wherever we asked for support whether it was media television channels and tv and all they all came to support us in a big way uh, even the civil society supported us so uh, the erstwhile un special rapporteur on adequate housing uh, you know dr milun kothari uh, is also a dear friend and he grew up with the work as such it was he who actually you know um, uh, gave my name to institute of global homelessness which was doing, which was set up in 2015 and i got invited by them to uh, chicago uh, to present uh, the work we are doing in india and from then on uh, we've had series of meetings there i have been going there and in 2020 last um, year uh, on 13th and 14th of february we had event in in the united nations uh, where we were trying to bring up the entire issue of homelessness to be taken up by the united nations you know and um, so i was called to speak on uh, homelessness as such and there i mentioned as to how um, you know even uh, the government's moves of caa and nrc and all would be creating large number of homeless people in the country as such and we are while all this 20 years we have worked against homelessness and this drives by our union government would create more homeless people you know and uh, why the international community also needs to be aware of the efforts that we are putting in and i think uh, you know um, uh, we need the support of the entire union international body uh, to take forward the work and how it's important that we need to also bring an end to homelessness you know so uh, currently you know um, igh and the institute of global homelessness and un habitat uh, is starting a, um, you know an initiative called global homelessness data initiative i have been made an advisory committee member of that and the idea is that we guide the governments uh, internationally in terms of uh, how to have accurate data on the homeless people is very important you know and uh, so we have done our own work here kirit like in india we are part of census 2001 and 2011 and i must tell you i have seen with my own eyes how hundreds and thousands of homeless people were excluded by census and for me honestly census is the biggest fraud happening in the country as such homeless people are not enumerated the exact numbers that are there they are undercounted under enumerated as such you know. but that's one of the ways that the system invisibilizes these people and doesn't it wants to wish them away you know they don't want them around at all 
and which is very very sad um, as a leading human right activist what do you think should be done and what do you think can be done and what do you think uh, would be the next steps moving forward because uh, there is an impetus to now with a few stakeholders like yourselves there's an impetus to try to visibilize these people to provide them dignity to provide them livelihood to, to bring them back into the mainstream what do you think can be done yeah you know in, in fact uh, uh, we do require a policy uh, on homelessness like there's an urban national urban livelihood mission um, you know under which there is 50 square feet per person uh, criteria established uh, for them as such we were part of the entire thing when uh, national diversity council was there in this urban poverty group as such um, you know uh, and of course you know uh, there are groups in the country like igss and other friends who are working on the policy and we are supporting this initiative of having a policy on the homelessness as such also uh, kirit you know um, we have been active in the um, you know uh, supreme court uh, case where we filed a uh, you know pil in 2003 and um, you know 20 it, it became active in 2013 due to which the shelters across the country is coming up as such you know and it's of course a long way to go but when you're talking about the next steps and all i would say that you know i think um, you know we have to ensure that one that the shelters come up uh, all across the country uh, mumbai has been a recalcitrant state or uh, maharashtra been a recalcitrant state where like in mumbai you hardly have shelters for the homeless people despite the high court and supreme court asking them to have shelters they are showing the children homes as shelters for the homeless which i think is i think they, they are making a mockery of the entire effort of supreme court and the work that we are doing so uh, you know the cities need to come out the bureaucracies need to come out and uh, you know accept the people as their own people accept the homeless people the city makers as the people of this own country and give them the due as such you know so that we end homelessness big time and this can be ended sooner than later the yeah, time I mean, for it is now. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But there, there have been also aberrations. I want to bring that up as well. Uh, yeah. There have been aberrations like the Muzaffarpur uh, scam that happened oh. in Bihar, right? Where yes. a shelter that was being run by the Bihar government was audited. And then uh, girls uh, between 6 to 15 year old uh, girls were being raped uh, on a daily basis. He, they were being tortured and um, they were being molested by top politicians and their cronies and there was no audit and the entire system from top to down everything had corroded right so setting up shelter and, and of course when the scam was brought to light uh, hundreds of shelters within Bihar shut down because of the fear of uh, persecution right what, uh, so setting up shelters is just not the solution it by itself uh, I think auditing them uh, through independent agencies that are strong and have integrity uh, is also an imperative. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I think Kirit, thanks for bringing that point, you know. Um, uh, in fact, see, there's a difference between the shelters that I'm talking about, you know. The shelters that I'm talking about, these are open shelters, huh? right. which are 24-hour shelters, which are open shelters. These are not custodial in nature. You know, here you're not put into custody and nobody can visit. So anybody can visit, anybody can go anytime, visit the shelters and all, and it's open to everybody. So the men, women, children as such, you know. So wherever you close the shelters and don't allow movements to happen, like it happened in Muzaffarpur and other places, which are run by this Department of Social Affairs, by the governments and all. And, thank, and, and thanks to uh, friends like Tariq, you know, Koshish, which actually went about doing this um, investigation and found this, uh, you know, um, thing happening and it became a big time uh, story about, you know, what was going on in these uh, homes like that. So there's a difference. The home that I'm talking about is 24 hour shelters for the homeless people across the country, which is not custodial at all, you know. There is no police here. You know, it is run by organizations and uh, we, like, I'm also uh, a Supreme Court uh, Monetary Committee member for shelters in Delhi. So we uh, go and visit the shelters. We see if things are fine or not. If there are any issues, we take up with the local governments, pull them up so that shelter is done properly. So wherever you create walls like, you know, jails and all, you make these so-called homes, veritable jails, these problems will crop up. We are against jailing people. We are against custodialization of uh, poor people as such, you know, making these custodial institutions. It yeah. is not the right thing. And, yeah, and so, here, I think, you know. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 
no and here here i want to bring in this aspect you know that you you did ask me about um, kirit about the problem that we faced i think the biggest problem that we faced was also bureaucracy you know there was this one bureaucrat i won't name him in delhi when we asked him for 71 shelters he shot it down and said oh we had 16 shelters last year it was this one in 2009 we'll have 17 shelters and he made a comment ki because he said um, we are having winters in delhi there will be people dying in large numbers at the assess they die in all seasons so we want those many numbers of shelters he shot the idea by scoffing at the idea saying are delhi mein thand padti kahan hai thand hoti anand lene ke liye and he went on to be the chief secretary of delhi by the way so when such bureaucrats make such comments we will have muzaffarpurs in hundreds and thousands because they are the guys who are responsible you know they are, they care two hoots about people's rights democracy human rights and all that yes uh, one of the th- interesting facts about muzaffarpur is that it was a four story building with absolutely no windows just one small window which served as a purpose of ventilation on the fourth floor so we had no access the the kids have no access to the outside world and like you yes. rightly pointed out i think it's important that you create a space that is accessible that is friendly that is hygienic and can can be visited by people so that the ingress and outgress to that place is something that is uh, not inhibited in any manner and that's when you have the transparency and you have the openness in that space is when the actual change will start to happen as far as shelters are concerned uh, on this world homeless day is there any last message that you would like to convey to our audience uh, many of them do not know about the homeless issue many of them know about the homeless issue some may want to help uh, is there any message on this world homeless day that you would like to convey okay i know i uh, thank you for asking me that uh, kirit uh, before i come to the message i just want to share one thing here sure. uh, you know that um, you know that uh, i don't know how many of you know that uh, shalini vats who is a bollywood actress today who has played the role of dhania in pp live and who is kas who, who is um, uh, made a lead role in shanghai gurgaon and all she worked with us on the homeless issues in 2000 she was my team mm-hmm. member and met when i met her in mumbai about couple of years back she said indu the role the, the work i did with all of you guys in 2000 on the streets of delhi and with the children and all helped me in play the role of dhania in people life so today we have a actress in bollywood who so sincerely like shalini vats my only thing is that you know i think each of us sh- should be touching the core of sensitivity in all of us and it's i think homeless people are just like us i think as you call them city makers they are like us they have the same emotions same dreams and i think same fascination and affection for each one of us i want to tell that you know working with the homeless people for the last 20 years i have become a better human being my ma's and mphils have not made me a better human being i became better working with the homeless people with the city makers so i would request everybody who is listening here to this uh, important uh, interview that uh, program you are doing uh, kirith that please join this effort uh, in ending homelessness it's not possible for just few of us if the entire country takes cognizance of it tries to contribute in a big way we can end homelessness from the face of this country and from the face of the world so please join us i think it's it's um it's tough work but very interesting uh, very deep deeply fulfilling and also deeply spiritual work you know in the sense not going to temples working with the people is a real spiritual work thank you oh uh, thank you so much uh, uh, indu for taking time out to talk to us today and we wish you all the best uh, and all the other crusaders working with the homeless uh m- you know all the power to you guys uh, to kind of make this happen for the homeless because they really need you they really look up to you they really look at you as messiahs and it's important that you keep going on this path and mo- you get more and more people joining your caravan 
Okay, thank you so much, Indu. Thank you, Kirith. Thank you for this time you gave us. God bless Zindabad. Thank you. Thank you.